College, they say, is the best time of your life. It's when you get your first taste of real freedom and are introduced to a whole new set of people. The main goal of college, most would say, is to get a degree and graduate with a good job. One of the most rewarding parts of it, however, is the opportunity to become part of a close-knit community that supports you and helps you reach your goals. The COVID-19 pandemic has had profound effects on students' mental health for a plethora of reasons. An obvious one, however, is the loss of that precious sense of community that we had previously taken for granted. In this era of face masks and social distancing, it's been harder than ever to maintain friendships and forge new connections. Active Minds, a nonprofit mental health advocacy organization, collected data on students' mental health changes during the pandemic. More than 2,000 college students were surveyed by Active Minds in April of 2020 at the start of the pandemic. Through the surveys, Active Minds found that one in five of college students say that their mental health has significantly worsened under COVID-19 and that a whopping 80% of college students report that it has negatively impacted their mental state. A statistic that is particularly eye-catching is that 80% of college students surveyed reported that loneliness and or isolation has contributed to the mental health issues they experienced during these trying times. In fact, 63% of the college students who participated were reported that they find it challenging to stay connected with others. Despite the disconcerting nature of these statistics, it is indeed possible for colleges and universities to help e each individual student's mental health through building a strong support system out of all of them. Understandably, many students and faculty members in colleges across the nation are at a loss for how to keep their communities together in times like these. This past semester has been the ultimate test of our creativity. We could all use a little help, and Northeast Regional Honors Council is where we can find it. First years especially are in need of programs within honors that can get them better acquainted with other students as well as the school itself. Student-run honors programs are filled with hardworking individuals who are eager to help new students because they were once in their shoes. That's why peer mentorship programs are a plausible and effective way for new students to find their niche at their college. Peer mentorship can be done one-on-one -on -one or in groups with multiple, multiple mentees assigned to one or a few older mentors. Mentees and mentors can be assigned however the school intends by major, year of graduation, interests, etc. It also may be helpful for students to fill out questionnaires or forms to see who would be best fit to mentor them. Mentors can offer advice on making friends, using syllabi, studying, picking classes, and dealing with stress. Another struggle that transfer students and freshmen alike may encounter is getting to know the campus. At the height of the pandemic, many incoming first years or transfer students may have missed out on physical tours at their new schools. As a consequence, move-in day may be the first time on campus for many of them. For students who have not yet visited, virtual tours through online college portals, portals are convenient, but do not live up to the regular in-person student-directed tour. Students and families often cannot ask questions in virtual tours and miss out on the opinions and unique comments from their student tour guide. In order to make up for this, honor students can meet with students over Zoom to accompany them on their virtual tour, giving their unique perspective and advice. As leaders of their campus community, it's also important for honor students to touch on something that has been so heavily impacted in the past year, student mental health. Even over Zoom, honor students can come together to create a safe place where students can support one another. Students can host their own stress reduction workshops at Zoom meetings. Attendees can engage in stress relief activities such as coloring, meditation, yoga, and journaling. Of course, these things can be done on your own, but regular meetings offer the discipline students need to actually make a habit out of them. Being on Zoom to journal or color with other students helps to hold them accountable for taking the time to care for their mental health. It can also be beneficial for students to chat with each other about how they've been feeling about this new norm, 
as they are all experiencing it, students can listen and offer advice or even just their empathy to one another. Believe it or not, it's still possible for student honors programs to host fun events as they once did before the pandemic started. In fact, movie night by Zoom may be even easier than in person for students to enjoy a movie together. Podcast chats and book chats can also give students something to talk about together and bond over, as well as a simple snack and chat. For fun and for stress relief, students can host their own Zoom meetings to direct DIY crafts, simple recipes, and games such as categories, Kahoot contests, and even virtual card games. It's hard and disappointing to face the fact that most field trips are likely a no-go this year, especially when trips are one of the most attractive advantages to being in the honors program at many schools. Still, students can make it the best of it and work together to find ways to learn about topics they're interested in. Despite the hassle that Zoom can be and the occasional technical difficulties that accompany it, this new world of virtual learning has made it made it easier than ever before to have guest speakers. Inviting guest speakers is something for student honors programs to consider in these trying times as it involves no traveling, and the speakers themselves may even have a little more time on their hands these days. With everything going on in the world, there's plenty for guest speakers or even student speakers to talk about. These topics include, but are not limited to, racial injustice, gender injustice, classism, ableism, and pandemic-related issues. Honors can also offer services like tutoring, organizational or study skill workshops, and peer review opportunities when students need an extra hand. In addition to peer mentoring that was mentioned earlier, tutoring services within honors-run student programs can greatly benefit those who are struggling to stay on task these days or need help in a certain class. Fortunately, Zoom features such as screen sharing have made this a lot easier. In such challenging times, there are plenty of places and institutions in need of financial, material, and emotional support. Frontline workers such as healthcare employees risk their lives routinely to protect the community and care for those who have already fallen ill. So many people struggling are due to the events of the past year, but where do we start? When considering what organization to involve your honors program in, consider its relevance to the students. It makes much more sense to make cards for the hospital down the street than for a health care center in a different state. It's important to choose institutions and places to donate that align with students' values. The COVID-19 pandemic will be a defining time of all of our lives. It has affected all of us, whether it be socially, educationally, or health-related. We have had to make serious accommodations in order to continue our education in such difficult circumstances. However, this virus is just a speed bump, not a roadblock. Like the strong honor students and staff that we are, we will continue to succeed academically and in all other aspects by adapting to these strange changes and forging a college community stronger than ever before.